Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's finally make something searchable here. So we created a function, uh, search item. So let's go down here and see it. So search item, that's the function. So instead of just doing a console.log, let's actually tell it to do something. So we captured the event here, right? Now event contains something called target. So I'll say var text. Now I want to get the text that was typed. So I'll say var text is equal to, so what would it be equal to? I'll use the event itself because the event also contains a target. So if you do a console.log of the E itself, you will see that there is target there. Now there are two uh, targets. There is just dot target, which is the actual item that was clicked okay and then there's current target now current target the difference between the two is that uh, current target is the one that has the event listener on it that's current target and then target is the item that was clicked in this case both are the same because uh, target is the one with this and that's the item also that is being typed on so using either will give you the same result but this is not always true I'll give an example, for example, if you put an event on this div, if I put an onClick listener on this div, okay, now this div contains other content inside. So what will happen is if I ask for the current target, I will always get the div because it's the one that has the onClick. So if I add an onClick like this here, so whenever this event fires, uh, I will always get, if I say e.currentTarget, I will always get the div, regardless. Whether I click something inside this div, it doesn't matter. I'll click this, I'll click that, it will always give me the result as this if I say e.currentTarget. However, I say, if I say e.target, then things are different, because if I click on this, that's what I'll get if I click on, even though the event is on that main body so we're going to see an application of that very soon but for now uh, let's go down here so we'll say e dot target because in this case it doesn't really matter um, now the target is the item itself so I'll say dot value because that item is an input so it obviously has a value attribute to it right so e dot target dot value and the reason I know this is because when you are typing uh, inputs like this and you want it to show some value, some default value, you will say value like this, right? And then you put your item and say this is a value, right? Like so. So if I go here and refresh, you see, oh, wait, why do I not see this is a value? I'm sure there is value somewhere here as well. That's why. Uh, okay. Why, 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 why? Value, this is a value. Okay. Well, maybe because there's placeholder there, which uh, kind of removes everything. It overrides because that's why it's saying search. So maybe let's try and remove the placeholder for now. Let me see what will happen. Oh, it's not even showing my value either way. I have no idea why, but uh, it should have been showing that. So maybe let me do a hard, um, let me remove that there and do a hard refresh. Yeah, okay, that's what it needed me to do a hard refresh by clicking enter in there. Because the way things are made now with browsers, if you just click refresh, it will keep the values in the inputs, right? So unless you do an actual hard refresh there, then you see. So this is a value. So it says that because I've added it to the value attribute. So every attribute that's here, I can access it by just saying this item dot that attribute. So here dot value means the value, even though it doesn't exist here, it's innately there. So I can say dot class, uh, no, actually the dot type is a thing, dot placeholder, etc., cetera, et cetera. Anyway, without going too far there, that's the value. Now, I want it to remove the leading and trailing uh, spaces. So I'll use dot trim like that as a function at the end. The trim works on any string. If you put dot trim like that, in case someone had typed something like this and left spaces 
and then type something like that on left side. It will remove these spaces there and there because sometimes someone can type spaces like this and then try to send them and do a search. In this case, the trim will remove this and it will become something like that. So you can know that it's an empty string. So here, what we would do is uh, if text is equal to something, that's when we should try to search. Otherwise, we shouldn't. So say if text is not equal to empty like that, and then let's do something, okay? Or we can just say if text is equal to empty like so, and then let's do return like that, okay? I don't know why I'd put that there. Now, normally when you put an if statement, you have to put brackets like so. Now in JavaScript, if the if statement contains only one line after it, you don't need to put the brackets like so, it will still work like this. So if text return, it works just fine. So if the text is empty, just exit this function. That's what return does. Otherwise, we continue. So here we're going to send some data because that's what we are doing. Let's do send data. So like so, send data, data. Now we have to tell it what data we are sending. So let's t say data is equal to an empty object, first of all. And then we'll say data dot. So let's see what method we are using to send things to the Ajax system here. So Ajax is not really looking for a system for now. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to organize the data so that it's more, uh, what's the word? Uh, let's see here. Yes, I'm trying to organize the data so that it's more, uh, so we can easily sort it out here because like this, if we don't organize the data, one option is this. We can send every request to a separate page, right? So we can have Ajax for searching items. Then we can have Ajax for uh, maybe checking out. We can have another Ajax for doing other things. And these can be separate files individually here. So you can do that. That's not a problem. However, I find it uh, much easier to have one file that does everything and so that file has to know what this data is about, right? So it should know that this is a search. This is, uh, this time we are searching for an object. This time we are checking out, etc., etc. So here I'll say data dot data type like this. So what I'm doing here is that I've created an empty object and then I've, I'm adding a key to that object, which is called data type. So this is just you can use anything here. This is just a key that I'm adding. It's like adding items to an array. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just saying data dot data type. Now, because data type does not exist in here, this is an empty thing. It will add it there. So I'll say data type is equal to search. That's how we're going to know on the other side that this is a search thing. So we'll use this key data type and search. And then also we're going to need to send the text itself. So I'll just call it text, right? Just to ease things. And then I'll put the actual text there, put it there and then say send data. Now, usually this is going to expect an object of some kind all the time. That will be an object. So what I'll do here is when sending, I have to send that object to the Ajax file. So in the send, I'll say send data, which is this one right there. Okay, so we are sending it, but we can't send an object. We have to convert it to a string. Now you can do that by just saying data is equal to, and then we use JSON dot stringify. So there's an object called JSON that is used in JavaScript in order to handle JSON requests. So there are two functions, uh, two uh, functions you need to uh, to learn here. The first one is stringify, the other one is parse. So here we're using stringify to convert an object into a string. So it's aptly named uh, stringify. So let's put what we are stringifying in there, like so. And then once we do that, we can put it here. But there's no need for this extra process. We can just cut this out, remove this, and then just do it right there in here, like so. 
Okay, so the result of this json.stringify will be sent easy and straightforward, right? And then we have to receive it over here. Mm -hmm. So how exactly do we receive that information? Here we were just reading from the database, right? Directly, whatever we do, as long as we access this page, we're just doing a read, but that's not good. So now we, that we've changed this, um, <clears throat> uh, we need to change the way we are reading the information as well. Also, the handle result should change. So a lot has to change here, unfortunately, which I didn't realize uh, when I thought this would be, <laughs> the search would be a simple thing, but it turns out it isn't. So here where we are sending data the first time, uh, we are sending something empty here, which is unacceptable because data, send data expects us to have an item at least in there. So what I'll do is put an empty object in there by just putting empty brackets, curly brackets like that. So that's an empty object. So even there it will send an empty object, but this is not nice. We shouldn't send an empty object. What we should do instead is let's send some items. So uh, let's call, we need at least data type to be in there, right? So let's do that. That's how you uh, add things to an object. So instead of search, this one is going to be load, um, wait, no, actually, we're going to call it search as well. No, no problem. And then search expects to have text, right? So let's put it down here and say text is equal to an empty text string. Okay. So this is a search as well, but if the text is empty, just load everything. That's what we'll tell it. So this is the initial load of data uh, here. So if I refresh, I don't expect to see any problems. Everything should work as it was working before. However, once we start typing like this, we're actually sending data, but it's just returning this result again. So we want to tell it if there's a search text to use that instead. So how do we get the search text? Let me do this very quickly. Let's go up here uh, to the Ajax. And in order to capture the information that's coming from, um, uh, let's do this, uh, capture Ajax data. Now there are several ways to capture input from uh, uh, PHP. One way is using the post variable. The other one is using the get variable. And there's also the request. Uh, there's also cookie. There are quite several of these, but there's also one called in PHP input, which you use get um, file get contents, sorry. <clears throat> file get contents like this. And then here, instead of getting uh, contents from a file, we get it from the PHP input. So we'll just write PHP uh, like, wait a second, input like so. Yeah, this is how it's designed. So you may be scratching your head, but just do it like this, it'll work. Uh, and then we'll put that inside a variable and say uh, data is equal to, so I should stop naming things data. So I'll call this one row data, row underscore data like that. So we are capturing row data, which is being sent by Ajax. So I prefer using this method when I'm using Ajax. And if you want us to see what's in here, what's contained here, we can do that. I'm going to put a die here, and then we're going to do an echo of the row data like that. Simple and straightforward. But once we come back home here on the uh, handle result, what I will do is right here, I'll do a console.log of the result. So bear with me here because I want you to see what we are receiving. It's important. So inspect, let's go to the console and there we go. So you see, this is what we are getting initially when we just load the page. That's all, that's what we are getting here. We are sending data of type. We're sending information in form of a string and this is JSON data. 
and we are sending one item called data type. This is the key and this is its value and some empty text. But if I start typing now here, you will see that, you see that this is what I'm sending. The first time I sent a T, the second time a TH, okay? So as I'm typing, it's sending data to the Ajax file like that. So then we can use this to read from the database. Okay, see you in the next video.